so just a small amendment to make. Um, in the uh, last video, I mentioned that Lord North was our 10th Prime Minister. Actually, he was the 11th. I did amend the title, but that's just to clarify. Our 10th Prime Minister was the Duke of Grafton, and I'll get on to him in a minute, but just a little bit more about Frederick North, Lord North. This is uh, an interesting write-up on Wikipedia. North's reputation among historians has swung back and forth. It reached its nather in the late 19th century when he was depicted as a creature of the king and an incompetent who lost the American colonies. However, in the 20th century, a revisionism emphasised the strengths in administering the treasury, handling the House of Commons and defending the Church of England. Herbert Butterfield, however, argued that his indolence was a barrier to efficient crisis management. He neglected his role in supervising the entire war effort. Okay, so getting on now to the Duke of Grafton, who just preceded Lord North. Um, the, some of the personal information about Grafton doesn't seem to be available. There's no information, for example, in any of the sources that I can see as to where he was born. But he was born in 1735, and he was the son of Lord Augustus Fitzroy, who was a captain in the Royal Navy. Uh, and Elizabeth Cosby, who was daughter of Colonel William Cosby, who served as a colonial governor of New York. His father was the third son of his second Duke of Grafton. Uh, so basically, he came from a quite a blue blood family, quite a noble family. And he's one of a number of Dukes who have served as Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. Um, technically, at that time, the Kingdom of Great Britain. Um, so he was born in 1735. And this is some information from the Downing Street website. Wisdom is at no times more conspicuous nor more amiable than in an acknowledgement of error. That's a quote attributed to the Duke of Grafton. The Duke of Grafton was a colourful figure whose complex private life has overshadowed his time as Prime Minister. He was appointed by Pitt the Elder as the First Lord of the Treasury, but he became disillusioned by the failure of the mentally ill Pitt to consult him. As Pitt's illness got worse, he stepped in as Prime Minister at the age of 33. That makes Grafton one of our youngest Prime Ministers ever. In fact, I believe that might make him the second youngest after William Pitt the Younger. So that is one uh, side note. His short period of office was taken up by issues surrounding America. He believed that all duties on the colony should be removed, except that on tea. He also had to deal with repeated attempts to rebel by rebel MP John Wilkes to take up a seat in Parliament. He attracted scandal for his indiscreet personal life and love of pleasure, but his career was saved by his wife's own discretions, which allowed him to divorce her. Demoralised by personal attacks published in newspapers about him, he resigned in 1770. He received the Order of the Garter for King George III, with whom he had been popular. Um, and there's also been pr a lot of protests, I should say, around, mm -hmm. the, around the MP John Wilkes, who was quite a radical figure. Um, so he was in office from 1768 to 1770. Perhaps one of the most notable events of his tenure was the Corsican crisis. That was um, widely attacked when he allowed France to annex Corsica. And uh, as I mentioned, Lord North made sure he didn't make that mistake with the Falklands. So um, Grafton was widely attacked for basically his mismanagement of the Corsican crisis. Um, Corsica, of course, today is part of France. Um, another weakness that he had was that he struggled to demonstrate an ability to counter increasing challenges to Britain's global dominance following Britain's victory in the Seven Years' War. So, in all honesty, Grafton was not a wonderful Prime Minister, um, although he was personally quite a popular figure, certainly with the King. Um, there's, there's a number of things named after him in the United States. Grafton County, New Hampshire. It's named in his honour, as are the towns of Grafton, New South Wales and Australia, and Grafton, New York, as well as the incorporated community, sorry, unincorporated community of Grafton, Virginia, and possibly the township of Grafton, West Virginia. The Grafton Centre Shopping Mall in Cambridge is also named after him, and indeed lies on Fitzroy Street. I'm not sure if that's Cambridge in England. But anyway, that is the Duke of Grafton. Certainly his portrait, um, painted in 1762, six years before he was Prime Minister, uh, there's a portrait by Pompeo uh, Batoni at the National Portrait Gallery. He looks like quite a leisure-seeking individual. Um, and what we know is he died in seven, uh, sorry, 1811, 
at the age of 75 at Euston Hall in Suffolk, but whether that was his ancestral home or not, I'm not sure. So that is the Duke of Grafton.